Building resilience to climate shocks and stresses is essential for us at DRC because it touches the lives of displaced communities in all possible phases of displacement situations. Extreme weather events, such as flood and drought, can trigger displacement and conflict with immediate visible consequences. But helping communities be more resilient and absorb shocks also means that they are more self-reliant and less dependent on humanitarian assistance. And we need to ensure that the communities we're serving are not compromised in their ability to have an intact agro-ecosystem. For all these reasons, climate and resilience are very high on our priority agenda. For a little overview of what we just did in the training in northern Uganda, we worked in two communities, but in one of them, we focused along a road where we we know that water and nutrient from cows walking on the road are constantly flowing on this main vein throughout the community. Um, and, and then during major uh, water and rain and flood events, all that water accumulates into the valley, which causes major road damage and which makes this road impassable, which means that people and products can't get to market and wherever they need to go. A lot of this work with resilience design is about slowing, spreading, and sinking the water into the ground. The benefit of that is that you are able to grow more, you can grow longer during the year, you also buffer the extreme temperatures, and you also have the ability to drought-proof the landscape as well because you're storing water in the soils. So this is a really important part of the foundation of community resilience, both from an ecological standpoint, a social standpoint, cultural standpoint, as well as an economic one. When we manage those natural flows using the natural contours and patterns of the land, we can actually channel that energy and channel that water into a living system. So all we're doing here is having a gentle and passive relationship with the water. We've been measuring the natural contours of this land and redirecting it off of the roads and storing it into dams like the one behind me. The first idea I like so much about this project is planting the rain before planting the crop. As in, if you have your field or garden in along a slope, you are able to plot a contour locally using a frame, which I will use to, de to demonstrate. Actually, to, I will show people how to make the A-frame and uh, locally, I'll be able to plot a, a contour. The contour will be used to dig some bioswales that will be able to slow down the running water. They are digging here. They want, if the water comes from up there, it will stop here to help my garden to be wet even during the dry season. So I can grow other crops like vegetable and other things if I want. Often now what's happening is roads are being designed and the engineers basically go two, three meters away from the road and then they're done. They're saying, we're done, we're draining it. And often big gullies happen and cause problems in people's farms. What we're saying is, wow, there's an opportunity. Rain is coming off the road nutrients coming off the road, let's put it out into production. Let's put it into agricultural production. Let's put it into livestock ponds. Let's do fish ponds. Let's recharge boreholes and spring lines. And the second thing is, is how do we protect the road so there's less maintenance cost? And, and one of the ways we do that is like what this project is doing right here, is that we are taking water that used to cause the road to be impassable in the rainy season and actually turning it into something positive for the community. So we're going from floods to food. 